this topic is, is kind of fairly small. Oh, good. Okay. Um, but a lot of it is a lot of it is very very theoretical, and in some ways, like we've gotten to we've gotten used to how theoretical a lot of the things are, and like it's so <coughs> the whole concept of mathematics is built on taking something as concrete and making it as abstract as possible, and saying like that's the reason why uh, the uh, example that's most fresh in my mind is that mathematics is about. Is about seeing through. It's kind of like X-ray glasses. It's about seeing through like the, the external details of a situation and realizing actually these two things that look nothing alike are actually bound by the same principle. Okay. So for example, when you think of a population and it's it's growing, you know, just because it's got space to grow and that's what populations do. We know what kind of curve that that traces out, right? So you, you gain this exponential thing because the bigger population is, the bigger it can grow. So this one idea, we learned that in exponentials, uh, and we, we're going to go into like as exponential growth decay. That's a whole topic. The second part of that, the decay part, to think of radioactive materials and how they they decay over the time of their half life and so on, right? To think of those two things, populations and radioactive materials, like on the face of it, look nothing alike, right? But the mathematics of them is the same. Um, so. Polynomials, as a result, are one of the most abstract objects you know, that we can look at because we strip away all of the external stuff and we just say, well, look at the real thing. Look at what the heart of it is. Okay? But I think it's really important, especially for you guys, to realize, wait, why are we doing this again? So I kind of want to spend like a good, I don't know, I don't know how long this is going to take you to get through it, but at least a good 10 minutes just, just taking a step back. Maybe perfect time, maybe not quite, it depends. Uh, just taking a step back and thinking about like why are we doing this again before we dive straight in? So that when we are lost in X's and N's and all the different kinds of aberrant terms we're looking at, you, you understand why. Okay. So uh, I guess the heading, if you've made already the heading, hold it over I guess I uh, can make a something underneath that, which is why are we so interested in polynomials? Because in a real way, kind of like complex numbers, um, so much of what you've been doing for many, many years in maths has been building to this, and then we've not just built to it, we've like spent a long time thinking about just these, right? So my question is, why are we so interested? And I've got two answers for you, okay? One's kind of internal to mathematics, and the other one is a little more external. I'll try to explain what that is. So here's my internal reason. When you think about um, just the way mathematics works, right? Where did it begin? And the answer is it began with counting, okay? Uh, the fancy word for that is it began with arithmetic and saying, okay, look, here are numbers, and we need to use them in the body to quantify things, right? That's where it began. Now, when you take numbers and then you say, well, it's normal to try and operate on these numbers, to combine them in different ways, right? These are the familiar operations of arithmetic. Um, Everything starts with addition, right? Because you, you add things together. Subtraction is just a specialized form of addition. It's the inverse. Uh, multiplication, what's its relationship to addition? Uh, you add the, the however many times you times of the same. Yeah, very good. Multiplication is just repeated addition, right? And exponentiation is just repeated multiplication. So these are all forms from just a very, very, like as simple as it can possibly be, operation. Now, that's arithmetic. But then the next step after that is, well, what if you don't know what the numbers are? And that's how algebra is born, okay? And ta-da, polynomials, right? There you are. It doesn't take very long. They're kind of like the natural outworking of what happens when you have numbers, you try and do things to interconnect the numbers together. And then you wonder what happens when you don't know what the numbers are, but you can still label them and work with them, okay? So my first internal reason is polynomials, they're the... They're the natural outworking, like they're kind of the embodiment of all of these rules and principles and ideas in arithmetic and algebra. If you start with those, which are kind of fundamental to what mathematics is, mathematics is it's very hard to have mathematics without those, um, then you embody them in polynomials. Like this is what it looks like, this is the stuff of mathematics. So they're the natural embodiment of the principles and ideas. And I'm just going to write um, arithmetic and algebra like that. Okay. 
okay? So, to try and give this to you, I was trying to think about what this looks like, right? I came up with this kind of metaphor, right? Um, and you guys know, you'll laugh because you know how much I like English, right? Polynomials are built in algebraic terms, like you saw that in your x, your x cubes, 4x, whatever. So algebraic terms are kind of like the building blocks, and then polynomials are kind of discrete, coherent units, right? Here's one object, even though it's got little parts to it, they're all going to behave together, okay? Algebraic terms and polynomials aren't in mathematics, what words and sentences are to English. This is what I think is kind of the analogy. And sentences appear everywhere in English in exactly the same way, right? Like sentences are natural employment of like grammar and vocabulary and language. You can't, you can't speak without sentences. Okay? You just sort of naturally start doing that. And then it just kind of flows on and that's where literature comes from. And all these techniques that have sort of flowed out of that. Okay? So I hope that analogy helps you understand the first reason why polynomials are such a big deal. It's not just random. Polynomials are not one topic among many in mathematics. They're kind of like fundamental the way words and sentences are to the subject. Does that kind of make sense? So there's my internal reason. That's, that's why we spend so much time thinking about polynomials and understanding them, wrestling with them, trying to see the patterns uh, and, and applying them to okay? things. But uh, it's not the biggest reason. And so I'm going to go to the second reason, which is kind of external. So this is internal. This is internal. And this is external. The second reason we spend so much time on mathematics is that polynomials are ridiculously effective, effective at modeling the natural world. In the natural sciences, you wouldn't necessarily expect that mathematics would be useful. Because mathematics comes out of laws that we just made up. We just made them up. Uh, people who were in my class a couple of years ago, we did a big debate about is mathematics invented or is it discovered? And the answer is, it's clearly both, okay? But the invention side cannot be overestimated. Like, we made up these rules, we made this structure, and like, we imagined a lot of it, and we didn't think it had anything to do with real life. And yet, like, when you do something as simple as, let me pick an object that won't hurt anyone. Uh, this will do, okay? When you, when you do something as simple as take like a roughly spherical object and you throw it in the air, the path that it traces out is exactly a parabola. That's weird. That's really weird. When we look at projectile motion, right? We will, we will prove that, okay? Like, it's not close to, it's exactly a parabola. It's exactly one of those simple kind of polynomials that we can come up with, okay? And you might be thinking, well, yeah, okay, but like that's very simple. I want to um, go back to something that we looked at recently. These guys, right? And um, I wonder if you were thinking as we were going through, like, well, this is nice, but so what? Like, where, where do these come up in nature? You don't really go around and say, oh, look, there's a double cone just to sort of add uh, randomly in the middle. Um, the whispering galleries, they were kind of cool, right? But they're man made. Like, they have those particular geometric properties because we designed them to have them, right? So the question is, like, well, like, if polynomials are supposed to model the natural world so well, and conics are like sort of kind of um, built out of these same rules and vocabulary, then where are these? And the answer is, um, you all live on a conic section. Um, it's about 300 million kilometers across because, in fact, every time you look up in the sky, you're looking at millions of conic sections. Every object that orbits something that's pulled by gravity is on a conic section. We have an elliptical orbit. Um, I wrote down the number actually. The eccentricity of Earth's orbit is, what is it? It's zero point, hold on, da, 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 da. when I write it down. Oh, that's right. Our eccentricity is 0 0.017. That's the eccentricity of our orbit around the sun. Where are we? We are, we're that yellow one there, third rock from the sun, okay? Uh, the moon's orbit around us is quite a bit more eccentric. I think it's 0 0.05, what did I write down? I think it's 549, 549, so I'm just going to do that. Okay. Um, Neptune, Neptune has this really large moon, Triton, it's really weird because it orbits the wrong way around it. Um, its orbital eccentricity is 0 0.000016, which is a contender for probably the most perfectly circular object in the entire solar system. Like when you consider how big it is and, and the path that it traces out, how close it is to a circle is, is nothing short of amazing. Um, does any planet follow like a hyperbolic path? Right, so remember how I said, right, like all of these look elliptical and you're like, <laughs> go home Pluto, you're crazy. Um, 
that's, that's a, that's, that particular one is a comet, but Pluto has the same kind of, it's not on the right orbital plane. Um, the answer is yes. So every, almost every object in the solar system has an elliptical path around, around the center of mass. Um, but not all of them do, because some objects are just kind of passing through. And they'll come around, and they'll sort of be influenced by the sun's gravity, but not enough to keep it in orbit. So they will come around. In fact, I'm going to They'll come around, they'll be bent around, but then their path won't ever spin back, right? So they trace out a hyperbolic path or a parabolic path. In fact, speaking about parabolic, parabolic paths, um, what would you say, if I said to you, what's the most famous comet, what would you say? Halley's Comet, probably, right? Halley's Comet has an orbital eccentricity of, I wrote it down to make sure I didn't screw it up, of 0.967. Now, you guys know what eccentricity means and what happens when it gets very, very close to a special number. What would happen if this was just a little more? What would happen to its orbit? It would turn into a parabola. In fact, this is a, a pretty good image of what Halley's Comet's orbit looks like, which at this point, I think we all agree, looks a heck of a lot like a parabola. That's because it is almost a parabola. If it was just going a little bit faster, it would whip around, but it would shoot off at such a speed that Earth's sun's gravity would never be able to pull it back. Okay? Every object in the solar system is on a conic section with the sun at the, can you guess? It's at either, if, the, if it was a parallel path, it'd be at the focus, or being that we are on an elliptical orbit, it's on one of the foci, right? Which makes you wonder, hmm, wonder what's at the other foci, focus, uh, which is, so, I guess I'm trying to establish, right? Like, when we think about polynomials, because polynomials, like, because of this combination of facts, that they are everywhere, they come up just naturally in mathematics, okay? I, in the same way that I think in nature, if I'm, if I'm remembering right from like, the science that I did learn, because you know how much science I did learn, um, I think, apart from gold and platinum, we almost find none of the elements in nature just by themselves sitting on their own, because most of these react to things, right? Like you don't even get oxygen on its own, it has the bond to itself, you know? Um, and in the same way, right, like molecules and all that kind of thing, compounds, sorry, polynomials, they're just everywhere. They just pop up all the time. You never really get like, oh look, there's an X by itself, right? They're always clinging on to other things, forming polynomials that are the interesting things in nature, okay? So that's why we're going to invest more time into the tools of polynomials. Okay?